It's the quick take here on the Fulhamish YouTube channel after our 3-1 defeat to Liverpool on Sunday afternoon. Not the afternoon that we wanted and it could have been a little bit different. I certainly was uh, expecting a bit of a better second half from the lads. We're here at the Half Moon Putney where Fulhamish is doing a live show next Saturday after the Palace game. So if you're a bit of a loose end after the Crystal Palace game, you fancy coming down, uh, watching us do a live podcast, then uh, get your tickets. Link in the description. We're going to be joined by the legendary journalist and Fulham fan, Paddy Barkley, and uh, should be a good fun. Yeah, very few left as well. So if you do want to come down to that, don't leave it to the last minute because there's only about 15 or so tickets left. So snap them up while you can. Yeah, you've been pressing uh, refresh on the ticket sales, monitoring it hourly. I have. Been handing out flyers on the, <laughs> on my street, but, um, but yeah, it'll be a good night. Paddy Barkley as well, what a booking. Yeah. Um, hello, by the way, uh, George here. How's it going? <laughs> you all right? <laughs> yeah, oh, not not bad. Um, obviously... I'm a, bit, I'm a bit fed up, to be honest. <laughs> it was a disappointing afternoon. Just never really felt like it was going to happen for us, did it? And... Uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll come on to it. Yeah, well, um, we'll get we'll, we'll get right into it. And I thought that you know, first half Fulham, great. Second half Fulham, definitely not great. Because actually, you look at that first 45 minutes, I thought we went absolutely toe-to-toe -to -toe with Liverpool. And I really thought we were in the match for the whole of it. And, and, and certainly more than worthy of, uh, of being level at the break. Um, I, I don't know. I felt like we definitely matched them, but... On balance, I feel like Liverpool deserved to be up at half time. If it wasn't for that um, Castagna goal, which I think it came relatively out. No, we didn't have many chances. We were very wasteful in possession. I thought Iwobi, as a whole, just had a bit of an off game, and there were a few um, opportunities that he had to put it in the box that just went wayward. Um, Decker over Reed as well. I thought in the in the final third was quite wasteful. But I think that like the thing is with Liverpool is that that you can't switch off for a second like the quality that they have on the pitch and there were a couple of free kicks that they had on the edge of the area before Trent Alexander-Arnold got that got that first one and you just you just knew it was coming it, it was just relentless pressure from them that their press is just unrelenting and to get a result against Liverpool you need to have a combination you need to take all of every single chance that you get and you need to hope that they squander theirs and just defend um for your lives and I thought defensively as a whole we were very poor uh, first half much better however yeah that second half performance was uh, left a lot to be desired yeah I mean the um, the first goal um, the Hammersmith then were pretty fuming about the uh, the decision um, for the free kick um, there was a free kick moments beforehand that um, Harvey Elliott hit into the wall that I definitely thought was the, the wrong decision um, I've looked back at it, and for me, it's actually a definite free kick. I, I think there's a bit of a there's a toss in slip, which I think maybe some people thought the free kick was awarded for, but it was Jao Polinia's bad slide tackle that he'd only done uh, a few moments before as well. I mean, it's just an outrageously good free kick. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> as soon as you see Trent Alexander step up, step up to it, you're just like, this is this is this is going in, isn't it? No, no, nowhere near it. Didn't stand the chance. Just. Perfect. It was just such a good area for a free kick. It allowed enough for him to for him to dip it over the wall, so that even if you know on full jump, no chance of uh, obstructing it. I was I was in Putney, so I didn't actually get a chance. I didn't really see the free kick. I haven't had a chance to look back back at it. But I thought the referee, I, like I don't know who it was, but had a really poor game. It was very. I was getting very frustrated. It seemed to give Liverpool, and it's a, a common thing, isn't it? Like people talk about the. The top six bias, but today it was it was it seemed really uh, prominent and um, some just really like weak um, officiate. It didn't seem to like have a grasp on the game at all. There was one point in the second half where uh, it was a clear handball outside the area, didn't give it, and it took the twelfth man of the Hammersmith fans to shout a handball for him to go, oh yeah, okay, and then he gave it. I'm like, how can you how can you be so like weak? Um, but. Yeah, it was just the one for me was uh, in the second half as well. Um, Tom Kearney gets absolutely clattered, uh, and it's in such a good shooting position. Not that we score very many free kicks, mm. so uh, wouldn't have got too excited. But for me, that was probably one of the worst calls um, that he made. Yeah, I felt like all day it just was. It, I mean, it was a frustrating afternoon, really. I mean, uh, 
the Fulham goal, though, I thought was was well taken by Timmy Castagna, not who many people have had as Fulham's first goal scorer uh, today. But actually, considering there was a big crowd of bodies in there, I thought he actually finished it. I think it, the temptation there is to absolutely leather it, but he actually had the cultured side for it. Anyway, it was your end, so you probably had a better view of it than me. <laughs> I actually missed the goal. I was freezing. And I wanted to go get myself a cup of Bovril. Um, so I left like a couple of minutes before. And we were we didn't look like we were in it. We were sitting back, just allowing like Liverpool to play. I thought, OK, on balance, I don't think there's any chance of us snatching a goal here. And then lo and behold, I managed to catch it on the screen. So I did see it. I saw it, um, admittedly not from the stands. And it was such a good finish. It was really opportunistic, tidy, intelligent finish and I think Muniz was the key element in that goal he took out both of Liverpool centre-halves in the build-up and then obviously uh, had when Iwobi put the ball in had the chance which then led to the ricochet that like fell to Cassania. and I mean what a, it was just a really cultured finish I loved it and we had um, I think it was Trent was actually on the goal line and it was so in the side netting that despite the fact that Liverpool had a man like essentially there to do that job. It still managed to find its way in. Yeah, unbelievable. It was a really, really good goal and um, nice to see uh, Timmy Chestnuts on the score on the score sheet. Yeah, uh, and then just second half. I, I remember thinking, like, right, okay, okay, Liverpool have been all right at moments in this first half. I personally think we matched them, but I, I kind of see where you're coming from. I thought, we've scored, like, in the 47th minute. What a perfect time to score. They played in Europe on Thursday. They're not on great form. I really expected a Fulham team attacking the Hammersmith end to be, f I, I, be full of it. I was, I was actually predicting at halftime that Fulham might go on and nick this. And just, I don't know what happened at halftime, but everyone just fell off. Yeah, it, it was just, just nothing was clicking. Uh, I don't know whether we were, I, I just felt like we couldn't deal with Liverpool's intensity and their press and they were on it. And obviously they've got so much to play for. And we have relatively very little to play for. And I think it was just a, a mismatch. We just never looked to be on it. We were off the pace. Also, you've got a team like Liverpool. They brought on triple substitution. They brought on Salah, Nunez and Alexis McAllister. It's like it, the quality that they have all around the pitch. And they're, they're so dynamic as a football team. But they're just snapping at your heels the whole time. And, and, and we were just off it. It was... Yeah, the second half performance was really bad. And as I said earlier, the defensive slip-ups that we um, made, which uh, allowed them to score, I thought the third goal was very, very soft. Um, I think Tossin uh, gave away possession and then Jota just sort of waltzed through and then slammed in. Leno potentially maybe could do but I actually thought Leno had a really good game up until that point. He looked so solid and made loads of like really kind of confident stops and you know the sort of presence that you want your goalkeeper to have which just gives your back line um, confidence but I, I don't know I need to have a look back but it looked like maybe he could have done a little bit better that goal across the face um, shot across the face of goal but um, yeah it was it was it was frustrating more than anything because it felt like today was a bit of a free hit, not necessarily anything expected for Fulham, but we've been talking about it um, on the on the podcast that we feel like this Liverpool game and the Manchester City game is the opportunity to kind of have those big results that people will remember. And we've got nothing to play for. We should be playing with no pressure. As you said, Liverpool coming off the back of a disappointing European defeat to um, Atalanta. Like, this could have been a good opportunity, but alas, it wasn't to be. I mean, um, the second goal is such a big mistake from Awobi, isn't it? It's such a poor pass. And he tried a few of them as well. And I thought that, like, I thought he was our weakest player in the first half as well. I didn't really rate his performance at West Ham despite him um, yeah, getting the assist. As, I, I just feel like I don't like him on the right. I think he's good on the left. I don't really love him on the right. And especially when I feel like we have good options down the right. I think Decadova reads a right winger, not a left winger, but he played there today, I think probably to nullify Trent Alexander Arnold. And you've got poor old Harry Wilson on the bench and Adama Traore on the bench. I just don't see why we're trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. He didn't look comfortable there the whole day. If I was Marco Silva, I would have hauled him off way sooner. I thought that the substitutions came late. It was evident that he wasn't having a good game. So many misplaced passes and I mean, I really love Alex Iwobi. I think he's been a wonderful signing for us, and and but he's just he's just not 
on it. He hasn't been on it for a long time, arguably since coming back from the African Cup of Nations. And yeah, today wasn't his best performance. I'm sure he'd he'd admit that himself. Um, the frustration for me comes from, I think Marco should have pulled him off a little bit sooner. Um, Adama didn't really have a, much of a chance to influence the game. I mean, I thought it was quite interesting they brought Adama on because generally, I, w I wouldn't say the way Liverpool were playing, it didn't necessarily scream acres of space for you to exploit. Uh, Especially not on the on the left. Like, Adama has one trick and it's his pace. So he puts the ball past you and he gets to the byline first. He's one-footed, so mm. badly one-footed to the right. Don't put him on the left. Yeah. What's he going to do? Run past you and then try and cross it with his left foot? It's not going to work. I don't understand. Yet the one time that there was actually a good moment to try that was against Newcastle when Emil Crabbe had a yellow card. Now put him on the right. And what? what it's the only moment where it actually would have made sense to put him on the, on the left. Yeah, I know, I know. But... You know, what can you do? It was, I mean, it's Liverpool at the end of the day. I don't think anyone could be too too uh, disappointed with the result, but it's, I would like to see a little bit more from Fulham today. Yeah, I, I mean, also I think sometimes it's easy to underestimate the impact of Willian, but he missed out today and Bobby Deckard over Reed came in and when you, I feel like you really notice when Willian's not there because mm. he's so smart and he's such a good outlet all the time and his relationship with Robinson he so rarely gives the ball away it's mad how he is just one of those players that you really notice when when he's gone yeah we missed his quality was it injury here it must be injury I yeah think. Marcus said it's not serious so it might be a pulled a strained muscle or I don't know dropped something on his foot I don't know what what happened but it didn't it sounds like it might just be a one game thing but yeah I just felt like we missed him absolutely he's just he's just class his quality uh and just the, i guess the assurance that he gives you in that in that and you just know that he can make something out of nothing we, we definitely definitely did miss him today i thought it was quite nice that bobby got the captain's armband did you see that yeah i did i mean considering the amount of time he's now been at the club i feel like because mm. i know burnt leno sometimes got that captain's armband this season but for me bobby like he's a leader in that dressing room he's someone that i'm sure all of them respect a lot like mm. i think i I think he deserves it. And he did a job on Trent. Trent wasn't as influential today as like he was in that 4-3 earlier this season where he absolutely ran it. Like, and I think that is Bobby on the left. Like He is so good as a defensive winger, weirdly. Yeah. It's kind of, a, it sounds like an oxymoron, but it works. Yeah, no, absolutely. I like it's, it's, it speaks volumes for the quality of Trent Alexander-Arnold that was saying that he was nullified and yet he scored like an absolute screamer well, against yeah. us <laughs> again. <laughs> like, oh dear. Yeah, do they, could, could you, I know there'll be a few Liverpool fans watching this. Please, can you stop scoring screamers against us? It's, he, it's just worldies FC. Even the, the second goal, like posting in, it was such a good finish and it's just, you just got to be, you can't switch off for a second because they just have that in their locker, don't they? And well, from, from so many different uh, like elements, of the, like, there's not a single player in that team that isn't capable of pulling out an absolute yeah. screamer. Well, you think in this season, so 4-3 game, all four goals were worldies. Um, yeah. The 2-1 Anfield in the Carabao Cup, um, certainly the Kurt, oh, it was a bit of deflection, but still it was a long range goal and the Nunez one was quite good. And then, yeah, two more out of three today. It's just like... Give us a break, for the love of God. Just like stop sticking have, it in. Have a day off, Liverpool. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to quickly finish um, talking about Rodrigo Muniz because out of, I, th I think there were some poor performances out there today, but I just thought first half, he was amazing. Mm. And his hold up play for me is becoming almost as good as, as Mitro's. I really think that. And whilst... I'm sometimes like aghast as to how he's managing to do it because it's just limbs and it's just the draft just just pulling. But his, his skill and his touch, his ability to somehow get something on the ball and then find a player was amazing. And also, you possibly wouldn't have been able to tell this from the Hammersmith there, from the Putney end, his overhead kick in the second half was going in. Was it? It was, it, 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 and Tossin's hat, and Tossin handballed it and got in the way. <sighs> It was 100% goal. Whether Alisson would have saved it, potentially, but like it was flying in the back of the net. It looked like a really clean take. And the thing that stood out to me today for Moon is, is his ability to control, a lot of the time, very, very difficult crosses that come in. Like he did one in the Putney and uh, in the first half just in front of me where he cushioned it on his chest and it was like the ball just like stuck like a magnet. 
onto his chest and he brought it down and ultimately the shot wasn't amazing. But just like, you're like, how the hell is he plucked that? He, the leap on him, the first touch, the control, and it's the mark of a really talented footballer because you can't really teach that. That's, yeah. just, that's just ability, that's just like talent. Um, and he was great. He was really great today. And I heard even from the putting end, I could hear the, uh, the the chant kicking off. Nice. Um, so hopefully, Moon has heard that as well. But yeah, he was he was the uh, the sil- his performance was a, a silver lining today. Yeah, for me, it was one of those as well. Like I think we've been debating a lot of us as a fan base. Like is Moon is the number nine option? And like, look, he's now on a little bit of a goal drought. Drought. I mean, it's been like three games, but like he hasn't scored in a few games. But Actually, today, his performance against a very, very good Liverpool defence, the way he was able to get us back into play, I just think I'm, every week I'm getting more and more convinced that actually, look, we might need some backups around and we might need to like make sure that you know there's a second, good second option, whether rouse that player, I don't know. I'm getting more and more convinced that come, April, come August the 19th or whatever it is next year, it's got to be Moon is up top. Here, here, nothing to add. Yeah, I totally, totally agree. Yeah. And, and just... The, what he does for the, the squad and you can tell how much everyone loves him and, and I yeah long, long may it continue I think I, I want, want R9 R9 yeah, give him the number 9 <laughs> he's not let, let him lose the 1 he goes from 19 to 9 he's deserved the evolution uh, right that'll do for the quick take today um, if you would like to come along to uh, watch the live recording of a podcast here at the iconic Half Moon I mean George just quickly give a list of bands that have, uh, have played here over the years that have graced this stage yeah so I'm looking around they've got uh, they've got sort of Posters, you got Elvis Costello, Kate Bush did her first ever gig here, the Rolling Stones, to, to, to name a few. Um, yeah, The Clash, uh, and now us reprobates. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all such. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so definitely come along. It'll be a good night. It's always good fun. We stick around for a beer afterwards, talk about the game. Um, yeah, live this will catch on as well, which is always a laugh. We've yeah. got some good ones as well, haven't we? Some very good this will catch on. So, yeah, we'll be here hopefully discussing a Fulham win against Palace, although they did win 5-2 yeah, today. Really, really good. It's been some mad football today as well. Like, the, obviously, the Coventry-Manchester United game. I remember seeing the scores and I was watching Fulham in the second half being like, I'd much rather be watching that right now. <laughs> <laughs> that is mad, but... Anyway, yeah. Um, no, certainly. We probably weren't the highlight today. No, uh, no, no. Last of match today again. Actually, no, it's Liverpool, so we'll be we'll be in the top half at least. Deserves to be last, but won't be last. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, podcasts come out later. Let us know what you thought of the game in the comments. Uh, keen to hear what you thought of the match. And come on, you whites. You whites.